Just a few announcements while we wait for Khatib uh, Abdul Rahim. He's on his way. He did call and said he should be here a few minutes. Uh, we just want to uh, let everyone know that after Juma, we do have a five minute presentation DC Health Benefit. You see the table downstairs for coming by and getting information. And if it uh, fits your care, your medical care, please uh, follow through on information that will be given to you. We also uh, want to also pay close attention to next weekend. We know that Saturday, February, well, it's not next weekend, but February 13th, the sisters meeting and breakfast, continental breakfast, uh, that's at 9 o'clock. We know that we are getting the sisters together on the 13th, Saturday, from 9 to 10, you will have con uh, continental breakfast. And then from 10 until 12.30, there will be a discussion uh, discussion uh, head by Imam uh, Sharif, uh, but in addition, some of the committee heads will also make presentation, five-minute presentation. The next day, February 14, emphasize this as well. That's that Sunday, again a continental breakfast and meeting, but it's a community meeting, and that's at uh, 9:30 uh, to 10:30, which is uh, the continental breakfast. Afterwards, a uh, presentation on community affairs. Uh, so that's, uh, please say a note to the February 13th and the 14th. Savings Day, this is very important. It's time to uh, get monies in. February 20th is uh, coming up very shortly, very soon. It's a $60 bus trip. Those who signed up for round trip transportation, it's a long day, but it's going to be a good day. We're going to leave here at 8, and we're going to return after the banquet. Now the banquet is uh, $75. And we are in discussion with them. Hope we have more details on that. But seventy-five dollars be prepared. Uh, we have gotten a waiver of twenty-five dollar fee for seniors, so that uh, help us in our cost. But it's definitely, we need the sixty dollars in as soon as you can get it in, so that we can make the arrangement. We have the final arrangement for the bus transportation. Okay. There are other announcements. Uh, read your bulletin. The bulletin is there. Uh, you know, tomorrow, American Heart Association uh, Heart Saver or Heat Saver, the AED class, Holy Cross Hospital. For those who have signed up, don't forget, 9 a.m. tomorrow, American Heart Association, that's the AED class. Immediately, well, at 2 o'clock, there is a, a Quranic uh, class right here at the Masjid, Brother Tamir, um, Conversational Arabic. So that's at 2 o'clock, right here. So please, those who are interested, please uh, stay behind. And of course, we have a number of activities tomorrow. Intermediate Quranic class. On Sunday, we have a Shada uh, Youth Weekend, basic Quranic class. And of course, the Study Al Islam conference call. And again, next week, key bar presentation, February 8th, John Franklin, Senior Manager, Office of External Affairs, Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. Monday, February 8th, not next week, but Monday, February 8th, 11 o'clock a.m. Very good to have these kind of presentations coming into Master Muhammad. So again, don't forget, immediately following Juma, five-minute presentation by Ms. Mila Kaufman. She's the executive director of the D.C. Health Benefit Exchange Authority. Ms. Kaufman will be with us immediately following for five-minute presentation on D.C. Health Benefit. God peace be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Please turn off your cell phones until after Juma.
please. Allah, <laughs> Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayyullah Sallallahu Hayyullah Sallallahu الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله ونعوذ ونعوذ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اسكيز مي الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعتوب عليه ونعوذ بالله من شر انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدل الله فوضى متار ومن يدل فولنا مرج فول فلنا تجدا لها ولي مرشدا وشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على وسلم وعلى وعلى وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اجمعين we praise allah we praise allah we seek his assistance we seek his help we ask forgiveness from him and we repent to him and we seek refuge in Allah from our own evil and from our own bad deeds. <clears throat> anyone who has been guided by Allah, he is indeed guided and anyone who has been misguided, you will never find a guardian to guide you. We bear witness, ashhadu and collectively bear witness, nashhadu that there is no deity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one with our partner and we bear witness, ashhadu and we collectively bear witness, nashhadu that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. We ask Allah, Allahumma, to send salutations and prayers and peace and blessings upon his servant and his messenger, Muhammad, and upon his family and all his companions. I'm at bottom of folios of that excellent salutation. Dear beloved believers, Muslims, we welcome you to the Jummah. Uh, we, uh, we have an opportunity to be able to come here uh, just for a period of time, just to be able to collectively come together to witness, to worship Allah on our weekly assembly. Um, we were rushing to get here, and uh, it's always beautiful to be able to step back and shift our focus a bit 
to come back to this moment of spirituality, even within my own self, moving quickly and having to center back and toward the path in this busy, this very busy life we live in. And it happens so much for us all. And so we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to allow us to slowly come back to the rhythm. Come back to the rhythm, the cadence of what He wants for us. We say He, but really when we say He, it's a much broader expansion of, co- of a concept. It is beyond our imagination, our Lord who is Rabbi Alameen, he is the Lord of the world, the Lord of all systems of knowledge, of insight, and he transcends all other. He is the transcendental other in, a, in, the, in the concept, the bigger objective, the higher objective of how we thank Allah for everything he gives us. He is Al-Awwal, he is the first and wal akhir he is the, the last, he is the after, he is the, 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 the ending, he is the, the, the forever lasting. We give such small, we give descriptions of beautiful names of Allah, the attributes to remember Allah, but even in those essence, we know that the scholars, the wise, say that those, those 99 are, are also in many respects to be seen as sets, that those, those 99 certainly are a, a part of the attributes of Allah, but Allah's description is bigger than our own mind, our own imagination itself. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that beautiful example. Wa marasinna fi rahmatil alameen. Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who comes as a mercy, who comes in his uswatun hasnatun, his excellent character. And he follows that same great tradition of the Milat al Ibrahim, the pattern of Abraham the upright. And when we see Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam, the, 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 one of our great prophets, we should see not Abraham as the individual, but Abraham as a community, as an example of a prototype that you collectively, us all, can become in our earnest desire toward striving toward excellence. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah 33, Ayat 56, Inna Allah wa malaikatu yassaluna ala nabi, ya ayyuha alladheena aminu, sallu alayhi, sallu alayhi wa sallima taslima. And Allah and his angels sent blessings on our Prophet Muhammad, O you who believe, and send blessings on him and salute him with a most excellent and worthy salutation. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So again, we have a very short period of time, but an opportunity to, again, as a continuation from the previous uh, part two, if you will, of the last Juma we gave it two weeks ago, which was the title of Education, Education of the Mind. Tarbiya of the mind for you, those who are classicists who want you to use just the Arabic, which is not required, but for those who see that as imperative, this tarbiya of the mind, this emphasis of giving yourself correct perception, correct thinking. In Allah, kitab al hasana al kuri shay'in. As a reminder, we talked about before that Allah, excuse me, our Prophet Muhammad says that he prescribed. Excellent. Allah prescribed excellence in all things. In Allah, kitab al hasana ala kulli shay'in. I have prescribed excellence in all things. That means that gift of the intellect, that gift of the mind, that gift of nourishing yourself in proper perception of reality. Sometimes there's people who are walking by every single day who don't have a proper perception of Allah. They don't have a pr- proper perception of their own self. Allah says in the Quran, إِلَّا الَّذِي فَيْنَهُ سَيَّدِينِ The one who created you shall guide you. So he is nourishing you, creating you from, a, from, from the essence of being nothing, being a dead matter and rising you up into the high stature in which you are now. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, تَبَارَكَ بَعِيدَ الْمُقْوَ هُوَ عَلَى كُلِي شَيْءِ قَدِيرٍ أَلَّذِي قَلَقَ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاءِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ عَيَكُمْ أَسْنَ عَمَلَهُ وَلَزِيزُ بِفُورِ He is the blessed be he who created the dominions of the heavens and the earth and he created death and life to teach each of us for he is all forgiving most merciful Allah Ta'ala this is our Lord gives us and raises us up from being nothing and if you understand the concept of our religion you will see that we were raised up from being nothing into the high stature that we are now Allah we know in the Quran it says لَقَدْ كَرَمْنَا كُلِي بَنِي Adam. I have certainly indeed may know but every descendant of Adam every descendant of Adam the one that you actually didn't even recognize 
as being another human being, you walked by today and didn't even recognize him or her, or the person you see as having more economic resources than you and jealousy and envy and all that, Allah still raised them up with the high honor and stature. Whether you want to recognize it or not. When you say you, me, collectively, I do it as well. But that responsibility, brothers and sisters, Allah raised that person up, making them of nobility. We didn't need the British lords in the UK, etc., to establish that nobility and giving you these honorific titles. Allah Ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth, set it in the book of life. And that book of life is an instruction for every citizen of the world, regardless of faith tradition. It is the high status, and Allah has honored you to be able to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah. Didn't have to honor you. Allah Ta'ala, we know the great teachers also give us insight. They say that Allah does not need you or me. We will pass on. Allah does not need you or me. Do you think your fast, your extra devotional prayers, are you using extra gestures, thinking it will expeditiously, uh, those prayers will be answered quickly because you are somehow favored? No, Allah allow you to come into what we call the greatest plan on the planet Earth, which is Islam. But that also is a contractual obligation to strive, to earnestly resist, to earnestly move forward, to steadfastly stay forward on a consistent basis. And if you fall and drop off, okay. If you lived your life of what it, one individual may, be, may, may call a bad sin, it doesn't matter. Get back up. Get back up because I am not the judge for you. Allah Ta'ala is the judge for you and your experience and your circumstances are different than mine. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, فَوْكَ كُلْ دِلْ إِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ Above every knower is a higher nar. And that emphasis is an obligation to say, you don't know anything. And Allah will raise you up to that high status. We talked about death and life. Talked about this last time. So for those who weren't, this is a continuation as we build on, right? We know that in the Islamic tradition, there's something, a concept known, ilm al the art of reviewing. How do you think you get this memory? If you keep on reciting something, the al-fatiha, over and over again, it becomes like a mnemonic device. You recite it, you repeat it, and it unlocks doors through the repetition itself. But you must become aware and tap back into the tradition that has always been part of you. That you forgot about. You forgot about your own essence. You forgot about who you were from the very beginning. You forgot and dropped off the path. You, I'm talking about myself. You forgot about it. And Allah gives you another day, another moment, another breath of life, another extension to have a relationship with your Lord, an exchange to thank Allah. To rise back up and say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alameen. And look to your neighbor and say, what can I do? If I have enough for one, I have enough for two. Do you not remember the great Islamic tradition of the orange? And the orange itself is a very uh, diplomatic gesture for your friend who's sitting next to you. The chamber is itself of an orange. You can break apart and give to your fellow human being. For do they not reflect on the creation itself? Do they not ponder itself? Are they not mindful? Did they forget just the rules? Did they just get caught up in the rituals? And did they not come back and see how the signs itself can impact their life? This is the great tradition of the Islamic period of time. My, my background is in history. And we can talk about the experiences of the, the rise of edifices and creation itself and the contribution that have been made throughout the known world by Muslims and non-Muslims. But the greatest contribution for civilization is also the great human beings that were created. And the reason why great human beings were created is because the instruction of what individuals heard when they heard this new message of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah it was a combustion, it was an agent, it was, it, it was an element, it was, it was like kindling a fire. The fire itself, that energy that's released from that fire 
from friction, right? You see the fire itself. That's energy being released. And they saw that as an opportunity to run with that program. And that program itself then influenced the creation itself by pondering, by reflecting. The geometrical designs were sent individuals taking time, not rushing, and being able to ponder on the society itself and bring contribution throughout the known world. So the translation projects you see through Baghdad and, and Iraq and, and Damascus and throughout the known Muslim world was also an extension not just to help their own society, but also to influence the world itself, brothers and sisters. Allah Ta'ala says in Quran and Surah Al-Isra, وَمَنْ كَانَ فِي هَذِهِ أَمَا فِي هُوَ فِي الْأَقْرَةِ أَمَا وَعَدَلُوا سَبِيلًا But those who are blind in this world will be blind in the hereafter and most astray from the path. Many translations and tafsirs we can give on this. But brothers and sisters, be mindful. Stay awake. Stay back and get back to the path. Many fall off. Many people are blind to this world and they forget the blessings that are given to them. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wal fi akhirah hasanatan wa qina adhabin. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah Kareem. Brothers and sisters, this beautiful religion we have in Islam is our life. When our Prophet Muhammad was being elevated and rising to high station, he visited the sick and inquired about the welfare of neighbors, friends, followers, and even those who disbelieved in him. He laid down rules of engagement and parameters of war that became a central part of Islamic law. The Prophet accepted people at their word and forgave them easily. He harbored no desire for vengeance and rejected the pagan custom of blood feuds and revenge. Our Prophet Muhammad was a man of balance, of conciliatory gestures, and was a man of peace. Brothers and sisters, we won't be long because the Jummah Qutbah does not require us to be long. So the, the last time we gave Jummah, we gave a lot of information and sometimes it's, uh, I learned a long time ago and we've been taught is once it's not for Allah and His Messenger and it's for your own ego, it's time to go and sit down. The message is plain and simple. It is staying true to the essence of what we've been created and sticking to that every single day. It is not an easy task. Our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, one day, <clears throat> and according to the Islamic tradition, the Arabs believe that when the moon was eclipsed, that it was a sign of a wise person had passed away. And on one occasion, many individuals had thought that the Prophet's infant son Ibrahim had died. Many had thought that this was an, uh, that this, it, this event that took place was a momentous occasion. Perhaps a charlatan or an individual who's a charismatic figure would have used that opportunity for their own benefit. But the prophet responded and said that the moon is a sign of God, the sun is a sign of God, and that this eclipse does not eclipse for anyone. Brothers and sisters, we must move away from just superstition and myth and getting caught up easily by that. It can happen so quickly just by the very nature of who we are as human beings. We, all, we have our own cultural traditions. We have our own experiences. And in the contemporary context, this emphasis of reforming ourself, being true to ourselves, being true to our religion, these concepts like Islam, of reform, a tajdeed, etc., is often taking the discussion in the contemporary context. But we must, we must also be true to understand the difference between culture and religion, and understanding the reasons of why our faith has come into where it is now. We owe a lot to our brothers who are Christians 
and Jews. Islam is part of that progression, as you all know. And that progression has given us to rise to the high stature, the high standard in which we are right now in a saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. So, this is important that oftentimes we know that we have been unjust to our old selves, as we talked a bit about earlier. Allahumma dalamna anfusina. We know is a dua that we have been unjust, oh Allah, we have been unjust to our own selves by not giving ourselves the proper mindset. Not surrounding ourselves with the proper people when you know you should be in a proper higher status. There's people who are doing much more than I am. And I want to be in the company to learn from them. And there are those who are in the perception of struggling and I have a lot to learn from them as well. But we strive to be in the company of the righteous, those who can help elevate our understanding. And we know, brothers and sisters, that to reform ourselves is to one of the highest objectives to cleanse and resist and change as we have an opportunity every single day of this life. So the reform itself has to take place on two levels, of yourself and the principles are the higher objective concepts. So a lot of times this emphasis of individuals get caught up in the knowledge of just the rules, the regulations, which are important, they have its purpose, they have their place. We have to master it. We've all gone to, as young children, we learn and went to Quranic school, we learn the rise and fall of Islamic civilization. You may have been taught various books of fiqh and, uh, and, and, and learn from uh, various concepts of Islam, that technical, nuanced perspective. And those are important. You have to have mastery on that. But you also have to understand the essence, the, 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 the objectives have um, uh, spiritual, they have literal, they have various meaning to them as well. It's like an individual who enjoys contemporary music, but has not mastered the basics of jazz as the foundational roots. But you have to master the basics first. You can't improvise unless you master the basics. There's a point to this. You have to master the basics. You can't just recite and become a hafiz, uh, a hafiz of Qur'an and you haven't been able to go through the various harufs and be able to know that. You have to master the basics. And after you master the basics, then you can offer improvisation. The improvisation is, an inno is not an innovation. The improvisation is a contribution to then analyze how you, your collective community, can then impact the world. So now we have individuals who are, who are coming as far away as Japan to learn the art of jazz, because actually in a contemporary context, jazz is not even the popular music anymore. And they have learned and enjoyed that and gone back, and now that's a multi-million dollar industry back in, in, uh, in, in Japan. But it's because they appreciated the past, and they then can add it, their own flavor based off of their traditional influences and experiences. So I say this, brothers and sisters, we must continue to revitalize Reform, but do it in the name of faithfulness. Do it in the name of our religious tradition to come back and use and have our intentions fused with the faithfulness, respecting the past, respecting what's taken place in the past, but moving the conversation forward. So then, brothers and sisters, we can see Muslims protecting individuals throughout the world so that we are known as champions of human rights, racial equality, freedom. The Arabs say, mahuriya masuriya. With freedom comes responsibility. You have to have freedom, but there's a responsibility once you have the freedom. Just this past week, there was the Marrakesh Declaration that took place on the rights of religious minorities in predominantly Muslim-majority communities. Some of you all may have heard about it. But a very fascinating discussion lead, led by over 150 uh, Muslim scholars, intellectuals, etc. 
And just a few points I wanted to raise and extrapolate from this as we wrap up. In this right here, it says, whereas conditions in various parts of the Muslim world have deteriorated dangerously because of the rise of extremist fundamentalist groups, the use of violence and armed struggle as a tool for settling conflicts and imposing one's points of view. It says, and I'm moving through it quickly, the objectives of the Charter of Medina provide a suitable framework for national, constitution, const national constitutions in countries with Muslim majorities and the United Nations Charter and related documents, such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, are in harmony with the Charter of Medina, including consideration of public order. And if you know the, the Medina Constitution and Article 20, it highlights and protects the rights of non-Muslims. This is in the first constitution of the world, the Muslims establishing this. And also it argues in this point, it urges Muslim educational institutions and authorities to conduct a courageous review of educational curricula that addresses honestly and effectively in any material that instigates aggression and extremism, leads to war and chaos, and results in the destruction of our shared societies. And finally affirm that it is unconsciousable, unconscious, um, unconsciousable to employ religion for the purpose of aggressing upon the rights of religious minorities in Muslim countries. So brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful extension of saying we have a responsibility to be the example if you claim Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, as your leader. And you see this right here. So that we move forward and show the example that we are and can become. Allah says in the Quran, Every soul will taste death. And we test you with evil and with good as trial, and to us you will be returned. So brothers and sisters, we will all face various tests and, and struggles. We will face struggles, we will uh, face tests, we will face uh, uh, various elements that uh, challenge us. But how we rise above every single day of our life shows the better example for individuals throughout the world. And in that declaration that just happened to take place is a responsibility for, brother, for us collectively to be the examples for the world. We close in dua. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wal fi akhira hasanatan wa qina adhib al-nar. Rabbana taqabella min innaka anta samani wa tabata alinika anta wabar rahim. Iqamati shalaf. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي الصلاة حي الصلاة كم كم الصلاة كم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله نويت أصلي فرد صلاة الجمعة اثنين ركع لله تعالى استقبل كعبة وانتن تنتمي تراك الصلاة الجمعة فالله the most high face in the كعبة الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبر وإياك نستعين اهتنا سراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضعانين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعص إن الإنسان لا في قص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا صلحة وتواصل بالحق وتواصل بالصبر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله 
Allahu Akbar Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik Yom Ad-Din Iyaka Nabur wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim Sirat al-Ladhina Anamdu alayhim Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim Waradhanin بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله السمر لم يلد ولم يلد ولم يقل له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ذكر الله سبحان الله Alhamdulillah Allahu Akbar Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil wa ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir la hawla la qawata illa bila ariyadim Subhanaka rabbika yuziti ama yasifun Wassalamu ala marsini wa alhamdulillahi rabbi alameen Al-Fatiha Bismillahirrahmanirrahim الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبر وإياك نستعين اهدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المخدوب عليهم ورضاني Just a few announcements um, there's uh, just a few announcements really quick there. Uh, there you go, brother. Uh, he, can, he can do it then. Hi, Samaritan. Hey, just give us a few moments of your time. This won't take long. Uh, this has been well served. Alhamdulillah, we thank uh, Brother uh, Abdul Rahman for his uh, delivery of that which is good for our minds and our hearts. We have before us, now again, we know that it's important, health is very important. Take care of your health before, your, before sickness comes, right? You know the saying of the prophet, the five things, right? And your health is a part of that. Peace be upon him. I have before us Myler Kaufman. She is the director of the executive director, she is the executive director of the DC Health Benefit Exchange Authority. Appointed to the position by a unanimous vote of the Board of Directors, Kaufman is a nationally recognized expert on private health insurance markets and has worked with states and all stakeholders to implement health insurance reform. Her approach is informed by her hands-on experience as a former superintendent of insurance in Maine implementing health insurance reform. Being a formal federal regulator working with states to implement HIPAA reform of the 1990s, studying state-based reform efforts and markets, and working with employer purchasing coalitions seeking to leverage purchasing power for sustainable 
financing of medical care. This is very important. Information is being disseminated downstairs. Let us at least take five minutes to hear from Ms. Kaufman. Thank you. Thank you so much for that generous introduction, and thank you for inviting me and my team to your home. Uh, and we started working with you last year. We appreciate you opening your doors to help us talk about affordable health insurance. Yes. And that's why I'm here today, to talk to you about affordable health insurance. If you are without health insurance, you have three days to enroll. Open enrollment ends on Sunday. And if you remain uninsured, you will have to pay a financial penalty to the IRS. Some of you may have to pay thousands of dollars if you have no insurance. And believe me, the IRS will know where you are. Thank you. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm here to tell you that we have affordable health insurance. Anyone and everyone can sign up. No medical tests. No nothing. You just have to be a D.C. resident. And affordable health insurance means you have choices of private health insurance. It's private. And if you're 30 years old, it's as low as $113 a month, which is probably less than most of your cell phone bills. Um, very, very affordable. And if you still can't afford it, you can even qualify for reductions in premiums. Uh, we want everyone to be enrolled. We need your help to make sure that every single man, woman, child, baby, who lives in the District of Columbia has health coverage. That is our goal. And for us, it's very, very personal. Just a quick story. When I lived in Maine, I met a young woman. Her baby was sick. She called an ambulance. The ambulance came and asked her, do you have health insurance? She said no. The ambulance took her baby to the hospital but refused to take her in the ambulance with the baby. So she had to get to the hospital separately. On the way to the hospital, the baby died. And this young woman, because she was uninsured, was not allowed to be with her baby during the last breath that the baby was able to take. So it is so important to make sure that we never let that happen again, the indignity of being uninsured. You know that without health insurance, there is no financial security, no economic security, and no access to good medical care. So please, get yourself insured, and if you have health insurance, help us. Talk to your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers may be without coverage. Please commit to helping us by finding someone without coverage and helping them get insured either by going on our website, dchealthlink.com, visiting a bunch of enrollment centers we have, including here. We have people here who are ready to help you today. Please help us find every single person who is still without coverage. And with your help, we can make sure that every single person in the District of Columbia has the financial security and access to affordable medical care. Thank you. Come to lunch. Yeah, praise the Lord. We thank Ms. Kaufman for coming and her staff. And you'll see the table downstairs. So please go right there and get the information in reference to signing up for affordable health care. Uh, three basic announcements, very important. Meeting February 13th, the sisters meeting in Continental Breakfast, February 13th, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., meeting afterwards, 10 to 12.30. Please be there. Community meeting, same thing, Continental Breakfast, February 14th, 9.30 to 10.30, breakfast, meeting afterwards, 10.30 to 12.30. So please, we just want to make those announcements, put that on your calendar, and finally, well, a couple things. Savior's Day. Don't forget to check the office. Make your payment of $60 for transportation. 
and tables of $75 to be paid in Newark. So that's $60 per person. Tomorrow, the American Heart Association AED class. It will be held at Holy Cross Hospital. This is being coordinated in conjunction with our own health committee. So please, if you signed up, please be there. American Heart Association. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.